I'm meteorologist John Dawson in the Fox Red Weather Center, and we have had an active day across southeast Texas as far as the weather is concerned. It's been relatively quiet in the Houston area, but to the north and to the west, we've had a lot of storms rolling through and has caused a lot of damage, and we're going to be able to kind of get into that a little bit here in just a moment, but I want to start with sort of looking at what we're facing right now because it's actually a little bit of a lull in the action, a little bit of a break here to kind of catch our breath. As I mentioned, really the Houston area has been quiet, but we've had some stormier weather around uh, definitely out to the west uh, and to the northwest, and we'll continue to see some more storms of in those areas continuing to form. So let's talk about what our concerns are at the moment and the, the shorter term, the more immediate concern is the tornado watch that has been issued and it, there's some different expiration times. Uh, they're not all of these counties expire at 3 a.m., but the Houston area counties do expire at 3 a.m. So we've got Montgomery County, Walker County, San Jacinto County, Trinity County. Uh, those are going to be the ones that we're concerned with in the Houston area, and we'll watch for the threat for the possibility of tornadoes as we move through at least until around 3 a.m. And again, with that tornado threat, now is also a little bit of a, a quieter time. We have a line of storms that's getting a little bit more organized, and we'll get a look at that and see how that's going. Now, what is a little bit more of the bigger problem that I think that we're going to need to be prepared for later on in the evening, and this will impact overall more people uh, because it's going to impact more of the metro area is going to be this flood watch that's been issued and it lasts all the way until 7 a.m. So it's going to be kind of a, a timing from one thing to another right about 3 a.m. when the tornado watch go is going to expire. We get into around 4 a.m. when the showers and the storms really become a little bit more active again, and that's going to carry us all the way through until about 7 a.m. And that's when we will see that currently is expected to expire, and we'll see exactly how much rainfall is able to kind of accumulate and collect. And we're going to look at a future cast here in just a moment. But let's talk a little bit about the fact that we've also had some storms that have already caused some problems across uh, parts of the state. These are storm reports that have come in uh, so far to our newsroom and to the National Weather Service and look at these number of tornadoes that we've seen that have been been confirmed and also a little bit further back. We see all the hail and we see the wind damage as well. Our storm chasing reporter uh, Matthew Seedorf along with Mark Woodburn, his photographer, have been out looking for damage and they were in College Station when they had to take shelter at one place. But I believe at this point now you have moved on past College Station and you're in the Madisonville area. That's right, JD. We're in Madisonville. This is the same cell that went through College Station and started in Snook. Uh, that's where there was reports that the tornado touched down and then it went through College Station somehow didn't cause any damage in College Station that we're aware of. And then here we are in Madisonville, and the, you can see the damage uh, just in this neighborhood alone. I know it's dark, but this power pole down, uh, the lines down, and trees and limbs. And the entire community here in Madisonville right now is without power. And we're just hearing stories about people that were here during the storm. One person said it was just terrifying, and you can see the power of that wind that came through this mailbox just knocked over completely. Uh, fortunately, we're told there's no injuries, so that's the good news here, but definitely a powerful tornado. Moments ago, we spoke with the police chief here. Here's what he had to say. It's pretty devastating. Uh, I, I feel for the people uh, that are displaced right now. Uh, matter of fact, we have a, a nursing home down the street here that we're having officers assist in moving from one building to the other. Uh, they have, I don't think they have any electricity. Uh, the, the red light in that area, the street light in that area is, is mangled and lines are down. So it's a, it's a pretty tough deal down there. The cleanup already starting here. We've actually already seen them out here with chainsaws clearing up the roadways. Right now, police and fire crews are going door to door, making sure that there aren't any injuries and that everyone's accounted for. But definitely looks like a powerful tornado that ripped through Madisonville. Reporting live in Madisonville tonight, Matthew Seedorf, Fox 26 News.
Yeah, and Matthew alluded to the little bit to there about how this is sort of a long track tornado where it started as uh, down to the southwest of Bryan College Station and sort of, if you want to use the term bounced or sort of came up and came down, we're not having so many confirmed reports of, of how long it was actually on the ground, but reached all the way up and through towards Crockett even as a matter of fact. Now, another spot in which has definitely seen some damage is just to the north of Austin, Round Rock is one of those areas and we have some video. This is really amazing video of right outside of a Walmart and you can see people running for cover as this tornado. It practically looks like it's in the parking lot of Walmart and there's uh, an employee you can kind of hear kind of yelling in the background a little bit as he run, is, run, is, run, is run, telling people run. to quickly take cover and uh, just as quite a scene there in that uh, parking lot uh, in Round Rock. They had a couple times they had to shelter in place uh, within that area uh, and at this point we haven't had a lot of reports of injuries but that is another one of those confirmed tornadoes that we have definitely uh, been able to uh, see across the area and by the National Weather Service. So when you look at these storm reports uh, everything has definitely stayed to the northwest of the Houston area, which for the most part we were expecting that. But as we talked about that flood threat and the tornado watch is still going to be something that we're watching as we're moving through the evening. And here's why we get to look at this bigger picture. This is really the front a little bit further to the back behind us to the west, and it's beginning to get more organized. See how those storms are filling in right there? Well, this is going to continue to take place, and this line is going to continue to gradually move from more or less the west to the east. And as it does so, it's also going to slow down a little bit, but it gets time to get to the Houston area. And that's that flooding threat. When you have that slow moving line of storms that's dropping a lot of rain, there's also going to be a lot of thunder and lightning that's mixed into this. So be prepared for that alert. You might get a little bit of an early wake up call. So here is the future cast on what that's going to look like. As we move through the evening, we're going to push that on through. And then by the time we get to around 9 a.m., that Put, clears all the way through, but it took a while. You see how it sort of took a long time to kind of gradually work its way through the, uh, the all the way to the Houston area, and then that will clear, and we're left with the very pleasant conditions uh, after that. The the rest of the forecast is really looking pretty nice after we get past um, this line of storms. So a quick review here as that we are looking uh, for the storms to still be moving into the area. At least until 3 a.m., a severe weather component is going to be there with the possibility of tornadoes, the damaging winds, or the hail. Uh, and then after 3 a.m., it's really going to be this flood threat that we're going to watch as we watch these heavy storms, perhaps having the training, dropping five to six inches of rain, perhaps. That's going to cross that short term street flooding. So the real message here is if you're having, uh, is to not really leave the house, but to stay where you are once these storms fire up and really create some of the threats of that flooding across the area. Be prepared on what you're going to do if you lose power. Now, Matthew Seedorf there with that live look in the Madisonville. It's just so dark everywhere without that electricity and how you're going to provide yourself with some light as well as staying perhaps keeping that phone connected. So think through those things there before you call it a night and be ready tomorrow morning to of course check in to Fox 26 News uh, starting at 4 a.m. We're going to leave our, our little our, our break here in programming with a look at one of our photographers who is driving around right now in the Houston area. And this is a nice scene. The light rain safely navigating the roadways. If you have to be out, take your time. Give yourself uh, a lot of space between you and the person in front of you and be safe this evening. Check in with Fox 26 News again in the morning before you have to head out. We'll break in the program again as necessary.